اوکے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان احمد و نشلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد دس از ویک نائن ایس وی انفارم ڈیو لاسٹ ویک وی فنشڈ دوس میٹیریل سلائٹس اینڈ ایوری تھنگ بٹ اسٹارٹنگ فرام دس ویک وی آر ایکچولی گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دی کیس اسٹڈی سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ اے پرٹیکولر ایشو ان یو آئی اے اینڈ دین وی آر ٹرننگ ان ٹو you know this transdisciplinary approach how do we sustain that problem how do we stop that problem and how we can improve and what we can learn from that problem and uh, how a uh, transdisciplinary approach can help so in order to do that we need to also learn what is a uh, interdisciplinary what is a uh, transdisciplinary inshallah let's get to the class okay these are the three uh, most important uh, uh, topics that we are going to cover today first of all questioning the discipline based perspective how do you how do we make you question because uh, when you see a problem uh, you know if you remember that from the beginning we are talking about system thinking right so now uh, we need to we we i know the, if there is a problem you you let's say there is a common people's way of looking into that problem yeah and then there is a different way like you people like you are experts now you are getting you are becoming the graduates so when you are looking how do you ask questions to that problem so now do you have a discipline based perspective because when you see a problem you need to understand okay this problems you know comes not because of one factor it comes with so many factors so now what could be the issues so from how many um, disciplines from how many faculties you know these problems are coming through so this is what actually uh, we are questioning in discipline based perspective then the next uh, topic that we are going to cover today is actually what is this transdisciplinary approach right how do you approach to those problems so that what is exactly the transdisciplinary and also interdisciplinary approach and what exactly sustainability science is there a is there a thing called sustainability science yes today this is the new field sustainability science then number 3 we are going to talk about how to apply this approach and how to apply this uh, sustainability science on sustainable development issues all right so as i told you please concentrate on the slides because this is all uh, as like i told you is a case study and is going to help you because you are going to look only one case study but you can actually look hundreds like them but i want you to understand uh, you know uh, 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 this how, how 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 to question and how to approach and how to develop and apply those approaches if you understand this well i think when you are doing your project paper it will be easier so this is a kind of what do we call it uh, methodology that for you that you are going to do your project paper if you learn from this you can do your project paper okay this is what actually the 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 the, 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 the there are so many areas there are so many topics disciplines so how do you understand how do you say which one of them actually the most relevant discipline as you can see so many is there life cycle Uh, sustainable forest management community based water management and then you can see the big one sustainable development right you can see that uh, climate change is slightly bigger right decision support is small, slightly smaller life cycle is slightly bigger so according to the size you will understand that what is most relevant and uh, this is the case study that we are bringing to you today so i think uh, if you can of course you can read you actually please go through this and you see what exactly the problems that we are facing when we are talking about our sungai iiuam the river that 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 we are currently uh, we, you can see that this is one of the beauty of this uh, this this university that the time that i enter 
uh, you know, many, many years ago. From the time I enter, I always enjoy, because I go to library and I come out and then I will be sitting some places, I will be watching the river, you know. Especially those uh, boats come to those rivers. Those are quite beautiful and, you know, it's quite big actually. It's not like in the picture, it's quite big. I usually uh, see them, I enjoy them, I take pictures of them. And um, and then you can see that the river starting from the Mahalla, even beyond Mahalla, and then coming through the uh, law faculty, I call, then coming through the economics, and then going towards the library, and then going towards it, it, it touching the uh the directory building if if you can bring the picture in your in your, in your mind huh? i'm right now i'm right now in in the directory building and then from rectory building you know it crosses the road and then goes to you know the mini main auditorium then it goes to architecture and then it goes to uh, even further it goes to engineering then it goes to ict the other side it goes to you know, all the way it goes until it goes, it, go, it, it goes outside UIA. So we are in UIA, um, even even we have so many other, uh, this is the one, one way of, uh, what, what I'm saying is one way of a river. There's another way is actually takes, takes a break and then goes to human science building. And then it goes to education building. Anybody, anybody here from education? Have you seen the, the Kulli of education? beautiful you know if you are inside um, it, it looks like this one side you have a kulli of education the other side you have kulli of RK, irkhs and in between you will see uh, the river beautiful scenario if you if you remember I, I i hope some of you already been here uh, of course some of you is still not here so so when you come back you can see but the problem nowadays that we are having that the water is muddy and uh, the water is actually, you know, uh, 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 so murky, murky and muddy. The problem, uh, because we, uh, uh, it comes uh, from the mountain and then we have all sort of soil and the clay inside the water. So, so the, one, the, the one problem that I have, I haven't seen this water as pure as like a washer. It's not like, it's not like mirror. This, this water is actually always like, uh, you know, uh, uh, always like you know uh, what we call it uh, the color of tetari huh? <laughs> so so now the question this is the engagement question that i'm giving to you which discipline you think that can provide the most effective solution to murky and muddy river in iiu what do you think uh, so so now looking into as i told you Remember the system thinking that I told you. When you are looking a phone, for example, uh, you need to know that uh, from how many resources this phone has been made. Yeah. So, so let's say you are looking, you are looking into a slipper uh, or shoe. How many industry actually related to that particular making of the shoe? So now, similarly, I'm asking you this question which discipline can provide the most effective solutions to murky can some of you can please go to your google chat google um, google meet chat box can you please uh, type your answers go ahead just just type your answers i just want to say which discipline you think can provide the most effective solutions to murky and muddy river in iiu Let us make this interactive session <laughs> because I, I don't use an airport, uh, so that's why I'm using now. I want to see your answers in chat box. Whatever that you can come up with, whatever that you think. You, you, you can say engineering, you can say architecture, whatever it is. I'm waiting. Okay, just, just only give the answers enough. Strict actions by 
okay, okay. I'm not asking you. Um, uh, I, I'm asking you which discipline. Just name only the discipline. Discipline names only. Yeah, strict actions by you need to be given to a responsible party who caused the soil to cause. No, this is not someone is causing that. You know, it's a nature. You need to know this. Why, 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 why our river become tetari? <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually because of the sand. It's because of the river, and uh, there must be some mechanism, some engineering must be done. So it's not that someone is actually spoiling the water. No, we don't. We don't have any littering problem in the in the in the, in the river. Especially our river are clean. Our river is actually clean. You can see that uh, there are so many uh, living things are there already. The problem comes, uh, of course, the, 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 there's a lack of uh, maintenance, but it's not that easy, you know, to maintain a river. So I'm just asking you, you know, the university has so many disciplines, right? You understand my question? You have university have so many disciplines so many faculties we have so tell me which discipline which faculty can actually can give provide most effective solution okay good okay tamam good probably engineering but is it only engineering tamam go ahead others please answers please uh sir is there like an agriculture faculty in IIUM. Good, good question. Good question. <laughs> we, we should have it right. But similar uh, agriculture, similar uh, because right right now they don't name it agriculture, Vasila. But uh, if you can go through the Kwantan campus, we have a school of science. Yeah. Yes, architecture kulia. Okay. Like you said, agriculture can come under the Kuli of science. We have it in in, in Kwantan. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, they have also biotechnology, not the engineering one, not the engineering biotechnology. They have the uh, science biotechnology. They also have, uh, you know, they, they, they also have a biology. They also have a zoology, botany. They also have botany. Uh, they even have marine biology. See, these are the things are there. So hopefully they also have soil. What do you call it? Soil, soil, soilology. I don't think so. Maybe soil studies or something, right? So, so you need to think about it. What else could go? What, what else? What, what else? Is it only engineering and architecture? Guys, go ahead. I'm, I'm expecting more. Education, yes. Yes, you, you, you need to know how education can. Yes, of course, education is something to give the proper instruction. What about the legal unit, legal law? Just now, Vasila said, uh, uh, you know, uh, just now, Vasila, you, you told that, you know, this, um, that the party that who caused the problem. So this, this is where the legal, yes, very good. Urban and regional planning, very good. Yes, this one will come. So this is what I'm trying to ask. You know, to make sure that you are familiar with what we are talking. Uh, so which discipline can provide the most effective? OK, now uh, keep that in mind. I will come back to answering to those questions, inshallah. So this is what actually uh, what is happening. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the who is the main player and what is the interest? You see, uh, now you can see in this picture where these uh, uh, tetari, yeah, we we like that word tetari. <laughs> By the way, we are all fasting, so don't 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 drink now. Okay, just was kidding. So you see, uh, the, the 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 reason why the 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 water become tetari is because of this uh, rain, uh, you know, because of this sand. Uh, what they call it, um, uh, you know, the, the, this this you can see that there are so many uh, sand are dropping away because of the water and because of the deforestation. You need to know this when you are cutting the tree, you know, the tree actually that when you what you see outside is the tree, but what you don't see inside, the thing that you see inside is actually uh, roots. 
all these root canals all these roots is actually holding holding the soil that's why when you are keep on cutting the tree the soil comes down the soil comes down and then that also one of the reason why it causing the muddy river yeah and it happens you know it's not like it, because when there is a rain it, it the rain goes all the way up and then if there is any mountain with full of soil of course the the, the, the rain brings the water and when water comes water brings the soil yeah and this is the photo that we have it this is the kampong we call it sungai pusu just beside our university just you know if you if you are in ladies mahalla female mahalla you can actually see this kampong you know uh, just beside your windows and uh, this is the overall picture i mean the eagle sky eagle view uh this is the way this is actually small uh, kampong is there we, you just need to know uh you know what is happening up the upstream okay river research and applications this is also i think most of us we don't know there are also a dam um uh, there is a beautiful dam actually up there but uh, it's not open for everybody to go there it's not like there's a transportation to go there unless you need to take your motorbike and then you need to walk somewhere where you will see some sort of dam but this is uh, they are here talking about most common challenges in the rehabilitation of the uh, pusu river this is all again we have issues in the river this is the, this is pusu river is actually uh, coming outside and then only a part of a river is actually coming to uae so now it's not that uh, easy to you know make our water like this dam uh, but it is possible it's not impossible it is quite difficult but it is not impossible all right so you see since then what happens that um, there were so many works has been done here you can see on your right side the rector is actually standing the rector is actually in the blue t-shirt and uh, you can see that our students are actually literally going down to the river this is actually they are going to the Kampong Pusu because this is where the source of the river comes to UAE. So they go there. If you cannot clear the source, what is the point of clearing the tail? Right. So instead of clearing inside UAE, if you start clearing outside because the water comes from the source. So this is how you can see our own students. They went and they clean. They cleared the 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 uh, you know the river the plants and also they have taken all sort of you know all those um, dumps and everything especially the the the, the bins the, the dust bins and all they have cleaned the water you can see that and uh, river solution from engineering perspective so this is where let me give you the answers what are the disciplines can help be help 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 the most it could be the engineering perspective you need to also understand the river from the political perspective you need to know that because when river comes life comes together they call it uh, river of life so people from the beginning you know uh, if you look into the anthropological study people from the beginning they used to they started to live just beside the river this is the way of you know whether it is the indus valley civilization or uh of civilization people started living just beside the river because the river is a life so there is a political perspective like a cultural social perspective there's also legal issues in river pollution there is also it based solution for polluted river there is also river pollution from islamic perspective yeah so you can see that there are so many now you can see that there is a faculty of engineering here faculty of human science here faculty of law here and then faculty of ict i think some of you from ict is here the faculty of islamic legal knowledge and uh, different perspective in seeing the solutions you know it will actually give a different uh, different different or different ways to think about solutions you know um, how would department of irrigation identify the problem uh, what would iim researchers do to solve the problem 
what will be the community perspective how would business enti entities define the problem so you can see there's a lot to do here we are only talking about one sungai river one one sungai pusu river one one river there are so many rivers and lakes are there out there there are so many other issues like you know haze and also you know pollution air pollution water pollution we have so many issues like global warming you know there are so many other issues but every single issues need uh, lots and lots of attention and they require lots and lots of effort not only from one perspective the efforts should combine from so many perspectives that's the reason why we are teaching this to you today yeah this is the example of you know a blind uh, looking into an elephant and look everybody you know what they say a blind on the top you know he 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 touches some brush some some he touched uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, sorry some hair and then he said it's like a brush and then someone said uh, you know it, it, an elephant is look like a snake huh? and then uh, someone uh, say it like a tree it like a rope uh, it like a soft and mushy so this is all people look part by part there is no overall looking when someone overall looking when someone seriously looking then he can understand this is elephant if a blind person looks only one part of the elephant he wouldn't know that is elephant because he never saw elephant before that's why he is he is not uh, i mean he he was not able to see from the beginning right okay now we're coming back to the second part of the study the second part of the class which is the what is transdisciplinary approach yeah so this engage the, the engagement question is how do we s segregate problems in the world so here i'm giving you uh, you know to understand what is multi multidisciplinary interdisciplinary transdisciplinary you see there is a problem and in, in the between in, in the middle right so now if you are bringing uh, the solutions uh, from uh, different disciplines you know individually for example there is a doctor there is an engineer and then you know there is a lawyer and they want to give they want to give their own uh, perspective of solutions uh, problem and solutions then it becomes multidisciplinary but if you see here in the second picture we call it interdisciplinary this one is actually you have field a field b field c this one inside together they are actually forming together and then they are looking into the problem or they are bringing the solution and then the transdisciplinary is actually even more better way of doing here is actually they are all comes together what we call it quadruplex silex uh, later we will discuss about it you know you have design you have policy making you have management you have other discipline field this one will create a new field of practice and then it goes back to the complex problem situation so this is what we call transdisciplinary so here is another example for you disciplinary is one for example psychology alone uh, can be called uh, sorry about the picture it's, it's not very clear then you have multidisciplinary where you have psychology architecture engineering perspectives interdisciplinary is actually what all these three work together is interdisciplinary transdisciplinary is something that you know all these again you know work together but they work towards in a single same place this is what transdisciplinary all right interdisciplinary they work together but again they are not in the same entity but transdisciplinary they are working with the working together uh, and then the practitioner comes together this is the most important thing this is not only about academia this is also practitioners that's why uh, earlier you saw that there was a policy policy making designs management all this comes together with this so this is where the transdisciplinary is actually um, all the, the the entire university 
work together at the same time they also work together with outsiders this is what transcript for example kulia uh, of ICT kulia of uh, I call kulia of economics all work together together with a policy maker from outside the university right uh, like government like a society uh, you know like like people like politicians you know outsider so when you work together that becomes transdisciplinary okay here you have uh, the examples that i told you just now the government is there and then academia who we are right now the university and then you have civil society the common people and then the industry the industry players see government industry academia civil society it's again it's called quadruplex so this is all quadruple helix we have this is what we call it four ways of looking government industry academy civil society so any problem that you have right now let's say you want to talk about um, recycling issue you want to talk about the waste management you want to talk about the carbon omission you want to talk about uh, you know the air pollution you know, or the water pollution so now in order to bring the solution you need to go with this quadruple helix you need government support you need industry support and then you are the academy you need also university support At the same time these things should be conveyed properly to the common people civil society that's the reason why our uh, tansri our rector of the university he always uh, keeps on insisting as you know he says that we are here for many years for more than 30 40 years what was the advantage what was the benefit that we have given to, to the kampong sungai pusu this is a very valid question so what kind of interaction that we did with other people right that's why the civic society is most important in order to bring the solution okay let us watch this video so that you can understand more on the global transdisciplinary vision for the future. Can you hear can you hear the voice? Yes, sir. Okay. The United Nations has defined many good agendas for the world, but this is the most comprehensive one we ever saw. Don't believe last century's myths that there are laws of economic motion, that inequality has to get worse before it gets better, that pollution also has to get worse before it gets better. It's not true. Only if business really engages in this, then only we will be able to meet those ambitious targets for the benefit of all people on this planet. Humanity finds itself at perhaps the most exciting and challenging juncture in its history. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, are a part of the 2030 Agenda, and they can be seen as a vision for how we want to share the Earth's resources among what will soon be 9 to 10 billion people, all with a right to development. This makes the SDGs relevant for every person, country, and company on Earth. Okay, that, that, that video um, was good enough to explain to you why we are doing this. Okay, these are the studies uh, actually related to what we are talking about sustainable development you can see that um, we have so many phds and also master's program also bachelors so you see all those in orange is actually bachelors so what you need to know today that um, these are the uh, categories of the studies environmental sciences environmental studies natural resources policy sustainability marine coastal management assessment earth environment planning development technology social science water energy you know engineering all these things goes together and uh, 
why do we need transdisciplinary approach for sustainable development because we need to tackle the manifold as aspect of realities to increase understanding on global and complex issues to st to stimulate synergies among disciplines to support cooperation and exchange among experts and sectors you know if we don't unite together because as i told you it is not impossible it is very difficult but it is not impossible that possibility only comes when we uh, unite together because again i can also bring you an islamic perspective in this because when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about uh, you know this is the fitra if you remember if this is a fitra of the human creation allah has created um allah has created differences among us i think i think you can understand this the Quranic verse clearly says that وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَّةٍ Allah says in Quran, you know, uh, He actually uh, raised some of them above others in ranks. This is how He created. وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ We raise some of them above others in rank. Because some of us can become doctors, not everybody can become doctors. Some of us can become scientists, not everybody. Some of us can become business entrepreneurs, not everybody. Some of them, some of us can become ustas, not everybody, right? Some of us can become, you know, uh, even uh, deans and politicians and uh, leaders, not everybody. Allah says, do you know why Allah created like this? This is the most important question. Why? Why Allah? Why Allah did not create um, everybody equal? Why Allah did not create everybody same? These questions might come to you. You know, the wisdom is the, this is a great wisdom. Allah has not created everyone equally because, because an equal entity will not work for each other. You know, when, when people are equal, they don't work together because they say, I'm, I'm better. I'm better than you. He will say, no, I'm better than you. And just imagine if there is a kampong and uh, if there is a if there is an apartment and everybody are equal, then who will do certain work? Who will do certain things? So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the reason, the wisdom behind it is actually uh, is to have different entities working to achieve the same goal. We are going to achieve the same goal, but we are working in different entity. That, that is what actually uh, uh, is most important. That when Allah says that uh, Allah has created us differently, if that is the, if that is true, then what about the issue that we are talking today, the sustainable development? Because we need to be unite together, and we need the experts come in. Uh, you know, uh, like what. Um, uh, uh, what Imam, Ghazali, Imam Al Ghazali says, you know, he says that uh, uh, carpenters and the farmers, for example, uh, the farmers need uh, some something from the carpenters, and the carpenters need something from the farmers. It's like uh, what uh, Adam Smith later in 17th century, after almost 700 years after the death of uh, Imam Al Ghazali, he also prepared created the similar metaphor similar example and then that example became very famous is because adam smith uh, was considered one of the uh, father of economics but the truth is the muslims are the pioneers in economic studies uh, and adam smith said this uh, he gave the example of uh, butcher and baker you know the butcher needs something from the bakery and the baker he might need something from the butchery so that example also really so this is all uh, shows only one thing that we are all uh, towards the same goal because we need to protect this world we need to protect this universe so that our children our great grandchildren can live here peacefully right okay what are the implications of transdisciplinary approach in sungai pusu context okay now coming back to the case study so look what are the things that we need to, what is the approach? How you have the sustainability will 
and political will to change the river back to its original condition. Community to be empowered for sustainable solution, not as garbage collector. Business entities to know the limit of their profit. Government agencies to coordinate the uh, QH. I will tell you what is QH. QH solution. It's a, quad, it's a quadruple helix. St stimulating synergies, integrating knowledge. So now, what is next? Uh, quadruple helix based action, quadruple based action. So this is what actually we need to understand. This is what should be our approach. Yeah. Identification of different interests and stakeholders on Sungai Pusu. We need to know that who is actually living in Sungai Pusu. Is there someone controlling Sungai Pusu? We need to identify the different interests. Connecting and synergizing different perspectives and expectation on the issue. We need to know how to connect those synergies. And then we need to apply this quadruple helix based action until the river is improved. We, we are not only, you know, uh, bring only the academia, only the university uh, cannot bring the solutions. There must be a quadruple helix. This is where government comes in and industry comes in and uh, academia like university and their research comes in. And finally, don't forget the civic people, the civil people also comes in, the common man. This is another example of video for you to understand what is transdisciplinary approach. We need, we need to, work to work together, together to solve, to solve the, the problems, problems of the world right now. All of them and climate change is a global problem. I am from Uruguay. Canada. So the Brazil. Guatemala. Michigan, USA. Ecuador. Bogota, Colombia. Jamaica. De Cuba. Soy Dominicana. Nací en Santo Domingo. The problems humanity is facing from climate change to natural disasters have many, many dimensions. And so the problems are requiring us to work together to provide solutions. Acho que o mundo enfrenta hoje vários desafios, né? Em, no sentido de melhorar os aspectos ambientais, sociais, econômicos. Uh, eu acho que um dos grandes, uma das grandes mensagens que poderiam ser passadas é no sentido de abordar esses desafios de forma conjunta, de forma integrada e de forma com que uh, as prioridades sejam atendidas. We believe that doing transdisciplinary research gives us the ability to solve those problems. So, uh, how do we do transdisciplinary work? The first thing is we sit on the same table, uh, scientists and non-scientists. So we frame the question together, we frame the problem together, and we communicate the results together. And in order to do that, it has to be communicated in a language that will be understood by all. And it needs to have uh, a communication strategy that makes sure that we are not just sharing the information, but that we are actually applying the information to develop the solutions we need. So you need a lot of different disciplines and a lot of different stakeholders to really answer that problem. That's why we need interdisciplinary teams and transdisciplinary teams. Porque da la posibilidad de intercambiar con un grupo de científicos, de productores, de empresarios y de jóvenes talentosos de toda América y nos ha dado la posibilidad de formular proyectos de trabajo conjunto, de abrir puertas de intercambio, de conocer nuevas experiencias, de dialogar sobre los problemas que tenemos y de proponer soluciones. Esse seminário ele é bem interessante para mim porque no meu trabalho eu trabalho exatamente com essa abordagem transdisciplinar para resolver problemas globais. Então eu tenho que todos os dias engajar com diferentes atores, diferentes setores, então a academia, terceiro setor, uh, setor privado e também várias disciplinas. We had the opportunity to learn from local experiences and from other countries to recognize what do we have in common, what are our differences and how we can benefit to address uh, the issue in a regional scale. Whenever you study a complex system, uh, human beings being part of it, you have to realize that different groups of human beings will have different values, different culture, different ideas, and you have to uh, try to take everything into account, and that becomes very complex. But it is important. Uh, the world is now the way it is, basically because uh, a small group of people usually don't listen to a larger 
a group of people. And so basically, we need, as human beings, uh, we need to learn to listen to others. And especially as scientists, we need to realize that not everybody thinks the same way we think. And so whenever we go, go out to try to um, understand a complex situation, we need to first realize that we're going to have different voices, we're going to have different groups with different ideas, and we have to listen to all of them to be able to get a better picture of what's happening. Okay, that was the uh, transdisciplinary approach in action. You understood uh, how people and science collaborated. We need, we to, need work to work together, together to solve, solve the problems, problems of the world. Of the world. Okay, so now let us talk about what is sustainability science, yeah? At the beginning, as I told, this is a new uh, field. We call it uh, sustainability science. It was introduced at the uh, World Congress Challenges of uh, Changing Earth 2001 in Amsterdam. However, the concept and practice can definitely be traced far back in ancient history or various civilization as part of their traditional wisdom or indigenous knowledge. Uh, you know, basically, this is again, um, this is again, uh, you know, whatever the science that we are talking, um, this is the fundamental approach. Uh, so, meaning, um, if there is a science, to if it, if the science uh, goes or portray towards destruction, uh, that's not actually what we call sustainability. So, if there is any science actually uh, promoting sustainability and, uh, and 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 if you are studying about those sustainability the particular data and uh, you collect all those data and uh, you also learn the methods and then using your discussions to find the analysis and all then it becomes actually a science you know any any discipline can become science uh, but there are method there, there is a method to follow then only it is called a discipline once it is called discipline you can also call it science this is how the social science human science uh, you know uh, anthropology science uh, everything comes uh, because of this the sciences referred to in this context would include the wisdom of humanities and the contribution of social sciences approaches values and perspectives so this is a field of use inspired research and innovation like agricultural science, health science, defined by the practical problem it addresses, specifically those of sustainable development, conducted by drawing from and integrating research from natural, social, medical and engineering sciences and by combining this with the knowledge of practice, build a core of scientific understanding about interacting human and environmental system. So basically speaking, whatever that uh, we talked about the transdisciplinary, you know, when it comes together, and then when you are talking about, uh, you know, uh, different aspect, I think uh, that 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 uh, result that you are, because of the transdisciplinary, you are having a result of uh, different perspective, that result can be also called sustainability science. Yeah. Sustainability science is a problem-driven approach. Sustainability science focuses on the interaction between human and natural sciences, sorry, natural systems. Building a science of sustainability requires integrating multiple forms of knowledge. So in this way, uh, I think uh, because uh, the, the most important issue today we have whether it is uh, academia or whether it is any university today you know we have so many departments we have so many faculties we have so many disciplines and uh, let's say let, let, let us talk about this 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 particular class your class for example you have people from ict you have people from fiqh you have people from quran sunnah you have uh, people from law, you have people from engineering or economics. So now, of course, after three or after four years, you are becoming the expert in particular field. Right. So this is actually what uh, today we we are we are go we are 
um, moving towards a specialization because we are preparing ourselves for the job market. Because tomorrow the job market will only choose the expert in that field because the job market is actually uh, becoming very specific and specific and experts oriented. That's the reason why we are becoming expert in particular field. But that one particular field becoming expert in that particular field is not uh, it's not or it will not uh, save safe save uh, save the global save the environment that's why there must be the integration that's why you know this uh, sustainability science is a kind of uh, you know integrating multiple forms of knowledge so we cannot stop learning that is the reason why we are introducing this course at the beginning of the semester so that as as much as you are interested in learning your field you want to become expert in your particular faculty but don't also do, do not do not forget about other field do not forget about other knowledge you know uh, there is a there, there is a saying uh, i mean i mean um, it's just a joke or it's just an event. I don't know whether it happened or not. They used to tell this story all the time. There was a boat and then there was a professor and there was a doctor and there was an engineer. And then there was a person who was actually, you know, uh, running the boat. So the doctor said, I know so many things. Uh, do you know about medical sciences? The, 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 the driver said, I don't know. And then he said, "Oh, you lost, um, you lost half of your life." And then um, the engineering said, "You know, I know all those things. Do you know engineering, science, and anything?" The driver said, "No, I don't know." Then he said, "Oh, you also lost another half of your life." You know, this is how the other people, experts, always asking him. The driver said, "I don't know. I don't know." When he said, "I don't know," the experts started saying, "Oh, you lost your life. You lost half of your life." You lost a quarter of your life because you didn't learn this. Suddenly, the, the boat stopped. <laughs> right? Suddenly, the boat stopped, and then the boat was not able to uh, move. So this is now the, the driver's turn. The drivers asked the doctors and engineers and other experts, do you know swimming? They said, uh, we don't know swimming. And then the driver said, now you lost your whole life. <laughs> so this is just 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 an event uh, not necessarily truly happened I just just wanted to tell you know not necessary that uh, everybody the experts are perfect in their own way everybody need you know other people to live no one is actually self-sufficient like the like the boat driver the boat driver he is the only person who know swimming and they are in the middle of the ocean, middle of the lake. So without swimming, how they are supposed to move from that place to other place. So that's why this uh, sustainability sciences is something that actually bridging all sort of multiple forms of knowledge. Um, okay, let us uh, talk about, okay, there's another video to uh, talk about. Uh, this is another case, which is actually haze. I think in Malaysia, we used to have this um, let us talk about how to use sustainability science in action to stop haze.
Okay, that's how uh, you saw another example or how to stop haze. You, you also noticed, uh, you know, how many faces there. There were three faces. They were working in different faces. Uh, so many, you know, uh, experts comes together. So this is one example that actually uh, not only here, not only one. Because you see, there is a pro there are some problems whereby one country can solve it. But there are some sort of problem. For example, the haze, you can see the Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, three governments are working together. So it's a huge project. So, but it is not impossible. It is very difficult, but it is not impossible. Yeah. Okay, the last part that we are going to talk about today is actually how to apply transdisciplinary approach or sustainability science on sustainable development issues. Okay, so all these are transdisciplinary approach for environment and uh, development, right? And then also the economic growth and sustainability, questioning the patterns of growth, also the social concern for sustainability and well being agenda. So, this is the reason why uh, these are the three reasons why actually we need to apply. Uh, this approach, the transdisciplinary approach, yeah, and then this is how we do that. There is a, a societal practice, there is a scientific practice, yeah. You can see here that uh, there's a problem framing, uh, you know, phase A, and then you have phase B, and then you have phase C. So this is where actually we are framing the problem, we are understanding, identify the problem. And then in phase B, we are actually co-creation of solution-oriented transferable knowledge. In phase B, we are bringing the knowledge for the solution. And in phase C, we are actually integration. You know, we are working together with other field, with other disciplines, and bringing the application of created knowledge. Because we have created knowledge in phase B. And in phase C, we are actually in, with the integration, we are bringing the application of the creative knowledge. As you can see that on your social practice, uh, you can see also on your scientific practice. You can see that uh, in social uh, practice, you have societal problems, you have actor specific societal discourse, you have result useful for societal practice like strategies, concept, measures, and prototypes. On the other side, you have the scientific practices where you have scientific problems, uncertainty, lack of methods. These are the problems. Uh, these are the problems has been identified at the beginning. Lack of methods, disciplinary specialization. We don't even know what kind of uh, discipline that we need to approach. This is all comes in phase A. But in phase B, you have the scientific discourse, institution of higher education. In, science, in, in phase B, you have the universities work together. We have, uh, we, we, we have scientific papers coming out uh, to identify, I mean, to tell how we can solve this problem. Then in phase C, the result relevant for scientific practice, generic insights, methodological and theoretical innovations, new research questions, all these actually uh, based on phase C. Now the engagement question is, what is the engagement question now? How can engineers, social scientists, lawyers solve issue of climate change together. Now we understood, we identified the problem. We also learned that, uh, you know, uh, 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 we need to work on the knowledge so that we can, we, we can actually create knowledge. And then in phase C, we understood that whatever that created knowledge, we need to use the right tool to apply. So now here, the engagement question is how all these different types of expertise uh, can work together on the issue of climate change. You know, look, we talked about the Sungai Pusu river problem, very small issue if you compare with international issues. Then we talked about the haze issues, which is actually not for one country. It was for three countries, so slightly bigger than the Sungai Pusu river issue, which is a haze issue. Now we are talking about the global issue, which is actually climate change. 
this climate change is not happening for one country. If it happened, it's going to affect the entire global, the entire people, like seven to eight in by 2030, they call it 10 to eight to 10 billion people. It will affect every one of them. So now, if we can work together for Sungai Pusu, and if we can work together like three countries together for haze, why not we cannot work together for the global issue? That's why this is the engagement question here. And uh, you can actually see this video. Uh, this is the last uh, slide uh, of today's class. And I let you watch this video. This is a great, uh, I think most of you already know, but until now we were not able to talk about her because uh, we were waiting for this moment. She is very little and small. She is actually giving you the solution, how people can work together. Uh, so please watch this video. With this video, we end our session, yeah? When I was about eight years old, I first heard about something called climate change or global warming. Apparently that was something humans had created by our way of living. I was told to turn off the lights to save energy and to recycle paper to save resources. I remember thinking that it was very strange that humans, who are an animal species among others, could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. Because if we were, and if it was really happening, we wouldn't be talking about anything else. As soon as you turn on the TV, everything would be about that. Headlines, radio, newspapers. You would never read or hear about anything else. As if there was a world war going on. But no one ever talked about it. If burning fossil fuels was so bad that it threatened our very existence, how could we just continue like before? Why were there no restrictions? Why wasn't it made illegal? To me, that did not add up. It was too unreal. So when I was 11, I became ill. I fell into depression. I stopped talking and I stopped eating. In two months, I lost about 10 kilos of weight. Later on, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, OCD, and selective mutism. That basically means I only speak when I think it's necessary. Now was one of those moments. <laughs> For those of us who are on the spectrum, almost everything is black or white. We aren't very good at lying, and we usually don't enjoy participating in the social game that the rest of you seem so fond of. <laughs> I think in many ways that we autistic are the normal ones, and the rest of the people are pretty strange. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the sustainability crisis, where everyone keeps saying that climate change is an existential threat and the most important issue of all. And yet, they just carry on like before. I don't understand that, because if the emissions have to stop, then we must stop the emissions. To me, that is black or white. There are no gray areas when it comes to survival. Either we go on as a civilization or we don't. We have to change. Rich countries like Sweden need to start reducing emissions by at least 15% every year. And that is so that we can stay below a two-degree warming target. Yet, as the IPCC have recently demonstrated, aiming instead for 1.5 degrees Celsius would significantly reduce the climate impacts. But we can only imagine what that means for reducing emissions. You would think the media and every one of our leaders would be talking about nothing else, but they never even mention it. Nor does anyone ever mention the greenhouse gases already locked in the system, 
nor that air pollution is hiding and warming, so that when we stop burning fossil fuels, we already have an extra level of warming, perhaps as high as 0.5 to 1.1 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, does hardly anyone speak about the fact that we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, with up to 200 species going extinct every single day. That the extinction rate is today between 1,000 and 10,000 times higher than what is seen as normal. Nor does hardly anyone ever speak about the aspect of equity or climate justice, clearly stated everywhere in the Paris Agreement, which is absolutely necessary to make it work on a global scale. That means that rich countries need to get down to zero emissions within six to 12 years with today's emission speed. And that is so that people in poorer countries can have a chance to heighten their standard of living by building some of the infrastructure that we have already built, such as roads, schools, hospitals, clean drinking water, electricity, and so on. Because how can we expect countries like India or Nigeria to care about the climate crisis if we, who already have everything, don't care even a second about it or our actual commitments to the Paris Agreement? So, why are we not reducing our emissions? Why are they, in fact, still increasing? Are we knowingly causing a mass extinction? Are we evil? No, of course not. People keep doing what they do because the vast majority doesn't have a clue about the actual consequences of our everyday life. And they don't know the rapid changes required. We all think we know, and we all think everybody knows, but we don't. Because how could we? If there really was a crisis, and if this crisis was caused by our emissions, you would at least see some signs. Not just flooded cities, tens of thousands of dead people, and whole nations leveled to piles of torn down buildings. You would see some restrictions. But no, and no one talks about it. There are no emergency meetings, no headlines, no breaking news. No one is acting as if we were in a crisis. Even most climate scientists or green politicians keep on flying around the world, eating meat and dairy. If I live to be 100, I will be alive in the year 2103. When you think about the future today, you don't think beyond the year 2050. By then, I will, in the best case, not even have lived half of my life. What happens next? The year 2078, I will celebrate my 75th birthday. If I have children or grandchildren, maybe they will spend that day with me. Maybe they will ask me about you, the people who were around back, back in 2018. Maybe they will ask why you didn't do anything while there still was time to act. What we do or don't do right now will affect my entire life and the lives of my children and grandchildren. What we do or don't do right now, me and my generation can't undo in the future. So when school started in August this year, I decided that this was enough. I sat myself down on the ground outside the Swedish parliament. I school striked for the climate. Some people say that I should be in school instead. Some people say that I should study to become a climate scientist so that I can solve the climate crisis. But the climate crisis has already been solved. We already have all the facts and solutions. All we have to do is to wake up and change. And why should I be studying for a future that soon will be no more? 
when no one is doing anything whatsoever to save their future? And what is the point of learning facts within the school system when the most important facts given by the fine science of that same school system clearly means nothing to our politicians and our society? Some people say that Sweden is just a small country and that it doesn't matter what we do. But I think that if a few children can get headlines all over the world just by not going to school for a few weeks, imagine what we could all do together if we wanted to. Now we're almost at the end of my talk. And this is where people usually people usually start talking about hope. Solar panels, wind power, circular economy, and so on. But I'm not going to do that. We've had 30 years of pep talking and selling positive ideas. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't work. Because if it would have, the emissions would have gone down by now. They haven't. And yes, we do need hope. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. Once we start to act, hope is everywhere. So instead of looking for hope, look for action. Then, and only then, hope will come. Today, we use 100 million barrels of oil every single day. There are no politics to change that. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules. Because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change. And it has to start today. Thank you. Okay, that's what uh, you learn from Greta. She's just uh, 11 years old, yeah? Um, okay then, so I think uh, uh, that, that's, that's a kind of wake up call. Huh? She, she, talked, she talked in 2018, now it's 2021. So, 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 so that's the reason why actually you can see that a uh, small uh, goal like this also can come and bring uh, bring bring big changes you know like a revolutionary changes now today many universities and uh, institutes are talking about it you know because you know when when children like this uh, started questioning about their future and they started telling that uh, you are the reason because of our future because our future is getting dark and dark and because of your action so we become responsible for this yeah so i think uh, that's that's the point so okay then so i stop here uh, so if you have any questions uh, please uh, uh, please uh, give your comments questions whatever it is okay i just 